Well, good morning. I was so, I was telling BJ, I was so enthralled in the song. He's like, you're up, man. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> Which I really appreciate. My name is uh, Reverend Ralph Lowe. It is truly an honor and a privilege to be with all of you this morning. I start out here like I always start out by saying I am married to the most wonderful woman in the world. Her name is Kelly Lowe. Again, I tell you this for two reasons. The first is she really is amazing. The second is if you ever see her, you can tell her I told you she was <laughs> amazing. I am also the associate minister for the Pittsburgh Presbytery. I bring greetings from our acting head, Reverend Brian Wallace. Uh, the other associate uh, minister, Louise, Reverend Louise Rogers, and our stated clerk, Carla Campbell. One of my favorite holidays, favorite holidays growing up, besides Christmas, of course, between the ages of like five and 11 was the 4th of July. The reason it was my favorite holiday is my house would become the hub of this huge 4th of July picnic. And when I say huge, I mean huge. Friends, family, play cousins. Y'all know about play cousins? Play cousins. They would all come over. The food would be great. Pie, sweet potato pie, sweet potato pie. Barbecue, corn on a cob, fireworks. It was a young kid's paradise. We played all day, ate what we wanted to. It was great. The 4th of July also meant that we would get a visit by my uncle Ricky. Rest in peace to my uncle who was my favorite uncle growing up. I needed to express to all of you what it meant for us to receive Uncle Ricky during these holidays as he came into the house. So as, how do I describe this? So as to wake us up a little bit, I want you guys to repeat after me, okay? Neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh, neighbor. Who invited him? Who invited him? Let's try one more time. Neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh, neighbor. Who invited him? Uncle Ricky was, uh, how us old folks would say, a rolling stone. Those of a certain age would understand what that reference is, but every holiday he would end up coming to our home, inebriated is the word I'll use there, and which led to sometimes of arguments and which escalated into some fights and you can use your imagination for the rest. One particular holiday, I was in a space I was not supposed to be. Grown folks were talking, and I was a little child, so you know when grown folks talk, you're not supposed to be in the room. But I was in there anyway, and I remember one of my mother's friends asking her, saying out loud, why do you bother inviting him here? You know what kind of person he is? You know what kind of the things that he has done? You know how the night is going to end? Why even bother. My mother said, I know, I know, but a hot meal and good company can do wonders for a person. And besides, everyone has to have a place where they feel they belong. Everyone has to have a place where they feel they belong. Friends, I want to speak to you this morning about a place where we can meet Jesus. The table, the welcoming table, and it says something about our lives when we meet Jesus at this table. But before we get into the scripture about that table, let us bow our heads in prayer. Guide us, O oh God, by your word and spirit. That in your light we may see light, in your truth we find wisdom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. amen. And amen. <clears throat> Friends, our scripture this morning speaks right into the heart of belonging, and Christ displayed example of belonging and inclusion for us today. 
Our scripture reading for this morning, our gospel reading for this morning is Matthew 9, verses 9 through 13. And it reads like this. As Jesus was walking around, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and he followed. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, those who are well, who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come to call not the righteous, but the sinner. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Everyone must have a place where they feel they belong. I can only imagine that's how Matthew felt the moment Jesus said to him, follow me. Now I'm sure Matthew has heard about Jesus before, maybe has seen Jesus, maybe has been on the outskirts of when Jesus taught or gave a speech. But let's remember, Matthew would probably have been on the outskirts. You see, Matthew was disliked to say the least, by the Jews. He was viewed as the lowest of low and an outsider. So outside of the wealth that Matthew garnered through his tax collecting, I'm sure, I'm not sure if he had a place where he felt belong, where he, be he belonged. Now friends, when I say belonged, I, I mean a place where one is valued, one is loved, one is validated and has a sense of dignity in that space where their past is not a defining indicator for their future. Dignity is the key. A sense of belonging must have eluded Matthew until Jesus said, follow me. He must have felt like something was missing. Why else would this man walk away from his, voca his vocation, everything he had known, and leave it all behind? and only take a pencil, praise God. Everyone say, Christ inspires. Christ inspires. Oh, let's try that again. Let's say, Christ inspires. Christ inspires. But it gets better, friends, it gets better. So in our scripture we learn, and as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Now, I've been talking about this book for it seems like a few weeks now, but I'll ask all of you to take note. I've been reading this book called Black Liturgies. It's by Cole Arthur Riley. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it to all of you. But in this book of liturgies, Cole um, Riley, she has a chapter named Belonging. In it, she writes, I'm beginning to think alienation and rejection are the two great persuaders of our own unloveliness. The cunning will wield them against you so that you acquiesce to the systems of community in order to maintain membership in it. Friends, like myself, I think a number of us hear this narrative in this gospel of the calling of Matthew, and then I'm actually sitting at dinner with Jesus with other sinners. We may see ourselves as the sinner at the table. We may even see ourselves as Matthew at the table. We all do this when we read these narratives. Here's the problem with that. We, we rarely see ourselves as the Pharisees. But I heard how loud you guys were when you said who invited him here. Some of you understand have said that before. Can I push it a little further? Just a little further. 
Riley goes on to say in her book, perhaps you know what it is like to need to believe a certain doctrine or creed so that you can belong in a spiritual place or vote a certain way to belong at the dinner table. I'm going to repeat that one more time. Perhaps you know what it is like to need to believe a certain doctrine or creed so that you can belong in a spiritual space or vote a certain way to belong at the dinner table. Now, before you all come for me, let me be clear. <laughs> I believe in our creeds and our doctrine. I believe both enhance our community and offer substantive affirmations to the word, amen? amen. But to be clear, I want to be sitting at that table with Jesus Christ. I don't want to be the Pharisee questioning. But that table, that belonging comes with comfort. It comes with cause. It comes with belonging and responsibility. It means something for all of us if we are believers and want to be at that table with Christ. To know without a shadow of a doubt that we belong to Christ. No matter what you've done today, in the past, or in the future. And what we grasp from that offering of the table, how we can apply that to our future, in the example Christ gives us by sitting with us as sinners. What would it look like if we create spaces in our own lives from the example Christ sets at this welcoming table for tax collectors and sinners and Pharisees? What would it look like for us to create spaces of belonging all around us? Everyone say Christ inspires. Christ inspires. Friends, Jesus Christ shows mercy, shows love, shows belonging, shows relationship. And not just how we've known, not just with us in our sin and us in our wrongdoing, but also displays this mercy, this loving, this lifestyle that looks like an interaction with people, that welcomes people, that, as I said before, dignifies people. See, this, this table, this welcoming table is a place to meet Jesus and the common thread is not our piety. The common thread is those who have done a thing or two, made some mistakes, possibly hurt some people, taken the wrong path occasionally, but upon meeting Christ has been transformed and wanting and to do something better. Friends, for me, I know I want to be at that table because I know I am a sinner. And as, as such, as I sit at that table with sinners, sit at that table with tax collectors, I am aware that I am conscious of my sin. And I'm in the greatest need of Christ's help. It is only those of us who know how much they need Christ who can accept that invitation. And once we accept that invitation, friends, once we've accepted that invitation, the boundaries of alienation, the boundaries of rejection topple over. You see, Jesus breaks the convention of what people would consider access to him and what they justly deserve based on how wrong their past is. Jesus also breaks the social convention to say, you see how unjust this is. We all see how unjust this is, this exclusion of individuals. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to break this convention and it's going to offend you. Not only that, I'm going to challenge you as to why it offends you. 
That's why Jesus speaks into the language of the physician who has come to heal. Friends, I have to share if my Uncle Ricky were still alive with us today, I do believe he would say that he felt like he belonged. That my mother had created a space where he felt comfortable, that he could be himself, that he felt loved. Because people having experienced and witnessed what Christ displayed were inspired to do the same for others. Now, William Barclay reminds us that we may diligently go through all the motions of orthodox piety, but if our hands are not stretched out to help those in need, we are not religious, really religious people. We are not really religious people. At the table with Jesus, all believers are welcome, no matter their past, no matter their present, no matter their future. No matter what we have done, Jesus sees us. And not only does Christ see us, he sees in us not what we were, but what we can be. Jesus has faith in all of us to care and act on his message of compassion, love, grace, and belonging. Friends, we should be in all of this table with Christ. That sense of belonging should only inspire action, much like the example Christ gave us. I pray I have some people who are inspired, inspired by a seat at that, at that table, who value mutuality over preset acceptable social relationships. That means actually feeding the hungry inviting the stranger in, caring for the sick, visiting and caring for those in prison. We all know those words. We've all said them before, but how many of us, based on the inspiration of Christ, have actually acted on those things? We bring Christ to the table of the world and also see Christ in others. So whether you are the sinner, or identify as such, struggling to believe Christ would accept you before you are worthy in your own eyes. Or maybe Matthew, willing to accept the call on your life but still unsure of that feeling. Please know that that table is open to you. No matter what, Christ's example for all of us is to lead a life worthy that shows the dignity to others, that invites individuals to belong, where love and compassion reigns forth. Amen and amen.